Transmission and Distribution Systems, Part 2a. Basic Power Transmission Concepts. This is the first part of Topic 2 in the series of Transmission and Distribution Systems. In this part, we will be discussing some basic concepts of power transmission. Frequently asked questions. Like why high voltage levels are used. And what is voltage regulation will be answered. So, starting with the first question. Engineers are always aiming to design transmission systems. That transport electrical power with maximum efficiency and economical costs. And the best way to obtain higher efficiencies. Is to increase the transmission voltage. Voltages of around 132 kilovolts to 500 kilovolts and even 700 kV are used in transmission. These high voltages proportionally reduce the current through the conductors. For example, for a given constant value of power, 10 times increase in voltage will decrease the current by 10 times as well. This decrease in current results in decreased resistive power losses. We can see here that the resistive power losses in a line are given by P equals I square R. Therefore, 10 times decrease in current will reduce the power losses by a factor of 100. And lower the losses, the better will be our system's efficiency. Another benefit we get from higher voltages are reduced conductor size, which means a reduction in conductor costs. Moving on to the second question, a power transmission system can be considered to have two parts, a beginning and an end. The beginning or the point from where the transmission line emerges is known as the sending end side and the point where it terminates is known as the receiving end. The voltages at these respective points are known as sending end voltage and receiving end voltage. Now, the voltage at the receiving end should ideally be the same as the sending end but due to power losses and the variation of load, the voltage at the receiving end varies at no load and at full load. This difference in receiving end voltage at full load and no load is expressed as voltage regulation and is calculated as a percentage difference between the no load and full load voltages as a fraction of the full load voltage. Vs is magnitude of sending end voltage. Vr is magnitude of receiving end voltage. Vrnl is magnitude of no load receiving end voltage. Vrfl is magnitude of full load receiving end voltage. Before moving on to the discussion of factors affecting the power obtained at output of transmission lie that is the power at receiving end, first recall phasers. A voltage phaser has a magnitude V and an angle theta. Now we should know that in a DC system, power flows from a region of high voltage magnitude to a region of lower voltage magnitude, however in AC systems, power will be flowing from a higher voltage angle to a lower voltage angle. Consider the following system single line diagram. The system consists of a generator and load which is connected using a transmission line. Here VR less than zero is the receiving end voltage. V S less than delta is the sending end voltage. While S S is the sending end power. S R is the receiving end power and delta is the phase angle between the sending end voltage and the receiving end voltage. For the given system, the formula for receiving end active and reactive power is given as here, delta V is the voltage difference or voltage drop and X is the reactance of transmission line. We can note from these equations that maximum real power transferred can be increased by raising the line's voltage level that is Vs and Vr. This is one of the reason why extremely high transmission line voltages are being developed. And the greater the phase difference, more active power will be transferred as value of sine is 0 at sin, 0, and maximum at sin, 90. Any value in between them will show direct relation between sin of the angle and angle. While the reactive power equation for receiving end is proportional to the voltage drop of the line and is independent of phase angle, delta. So, if a load has a very high reactive power demand, it can result in greater voltage drops. That is why industries are encouraged to generate their own reactive power via condensers or any other reactive power compensation device. That is all for now. In the next part we will be doing a detailed comparison between overhead and underground transmission systems. We hope that you have a continued interest in this topic and this series as either a student or a professional. And we also hope that you find this content useful and enlightening. Please consider subscribing to generalpack.com or becoming a patron on patreon.com. Generalpack.com making power systems intuitive, open and free to everyone, everywhere. Thank you.